Welcome to this video about length, area and volume scale factors in similar shapes. Before we get into too much maths, I want to tell you a true short story about how I got banned from our local Domino's pizza place a while back. We decided we'd like a pizza for tea one evening, and I was nominated to place the call to order a 12 inch deep pan vegetarian pizza with garlic bread and a bottle of pop. Unfortunately, they were out of 12 inch bases, so the pizza dude offered me two 6 inch pizzas for the same price. Now, that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Well, actually, I didn't think so. You see, the 6 inch and 12 inch refer to the diameters of the pizzas, so a 12 inch pizza is twice as long in each direction as a 6 inch pizza, so it has four times the area. OK, the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. The radius of a 6 inch pizza is 3 inches, that's half its diameter, so its area is pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi square inches, or about 28.3 square inches if you're not happy expressing values in terms of pi. The radius of a 12 inch pizza is 6 inches, so its area is pi times 6 squared, which is 36 pi square inches, or about 113.1 square inches if you're not happy expressing values in terms of pi. Try it on your calculator now. That's four times the area. I should ask for four 6 inch pizzas for the price of one 12 inch then. What do you reckon? Well, the thing is that the 12 inch pizza is also twice as deep as the 6 inch pizza. So twice as wide, twice as long and twice as deep makes two times two times two is eight times the volume. So I asked for eight 6 inch pizzas for the price of one 12 inch pizza. Pizza dude wasn't having any of it, and I tried to give him a short math lesson to prove to him I was right, but it didn't go well. And in the end, the manager explained to me that he had my name and number and he knew where I lived, and I wouldn't be ordering from them again, or making any ridiculous demands and upsetting their staff. But I was right. Now here's another little story about a PowerPoint presentation I gave to my family on Christmas morning a couple of years ago to try to convince them that we needed to ditch our old telly and upgrade to a projector. Maybe I should have waited until after the presents were open, because it didn't go down very well, but the maths was right. So, here's our living room wall with our old telly. When everything went digital, it wasn't ready. When everyone started using HD, it wasn't ready. But it's got a lovely picture of Chris Packham on it, which is great, because I like him and my wife is a very big fan indeed. My cunning plan was to use the Chris Packham factor to my advantage and show that we could get a whole lot more of him in our living room when watching Spring Watch by using the perfect space above the telly to project the image. The telly has a diagonal of 66 centimetres and the space for a projector screen has a diagonal of 198 centimetres. So how many times bigger will our screen be? 66 times 3 is 198. So will it be three times bigger? As we saw with the pizzas, We'll get three times as many Chris Packhams across the screen and three times as many down the screen. That's nine times as much Chris Packham in our living room. Mrs B will be ecstatic, I thought. But I went one step too far. I suggested 3D. Three times as many across, three times as many down and three times as many coming out towards our sofa. That's 27 times as much Chris Packham in our lives. 27 times as much Chris Packham in our lives. What's not to love about that? Nothing, it seems, but we'll also have 27 times bigger spiders. And Chris and Simon King will be having sniffing competitions with 27 times bigger lumps of poo. So the whole thing was vetoed and we've still got a tiny telly. Now, talking of poos, let's get on to the maths. And I'm going to tell you about my patented lav method for working out tricky length, area and volume questions with similar shapes. Yes, here's how to use the lav. When answering one of these questions in your GCSE, always write down LAV underneath each other like this, and use my pizza and Chris Packham stories to help you remember that area scale factors are the square of length scale factors, and volume scale factors are the cube. For example, if the length scale factor is 3, then the area scale factor will be 3 squared, which is 9, and the volume scale factor will be 3 cubed, which is 27. This means that on the larger shape, lengths will be 3 times bigger, Areas will be 9 times bigger, and volumes will be 27 times bigger. Right, here's a question. Now everyone's got a smartphone, the bottom has fallen out of the market for model planes, boats and cars. So one company has come up with model toilets. They're hoping to tap into the market of closet model makers, who'd be flushed with pride to put together one of these little beauties. I hope it pans out for them. The question tells us that the shapes are mathematically similar by calling one an exact replica of the other at a scale of 1 to 10. That's the linear scale factor. So if you're measuring anything on the model, it will be 10 times longer on the real toilet. We have to find out what the flush capacity will be on the real loo. That's volume. Let's use the lav. 
Write down LAV and fill in what we know. The length scale factor is times 10. The area scale factor will be the square of this. 10 squared is times 100. The volume scale factor will be the cube of the length scale factor. 10 cubed is 1000. The question is now really simple. The bigger flush capacity is 1000 times 6 mil, which is 6000 millilitres or 6 litres. Next question. This time we have two similar shaped stuffed toys and we're given the area scale factor rather than the length scale factor. Now because the area scale factor is the square of the length scale factor, this means that the length scale factor must be the square root of the area scale factor. So as always use the lab. Write down LAV and fill in what you know. Area scale factor is times 16. Work out the length scale factor first and use it to find any other scale factors you need. The square root of 16 is 4, so the length scale factor is times 4. Now we can work out the missing volume scale factor, which is 4 cubed, or times 64. Don't try to take shortcuts and go straight from the area scale factor to the volume. Always work out the length scale factor first and then use it to find any other scale factors you need. Trust me, you really need to understand fractional indices if you wanted to go direct and most people just don't and go wrong. Now we can use the volume scale factor we just worked out to calculate the volume of the largest stuffed toy. 64 times 20 is 1280 cubic centimetres. Next, a slight variation on the same question. We have the same area scale factor, but are given a length on the larger shape and told to find the corresponding length on the smaller shape. Well, we'll start off by finding the lav, like we did last time, and filling in all the scale factors. This time though, we're going from the big shape to the small shape, so rather than multiplying the distance by 4, we'll have to divide it by 4. This gives us a nose width of 1 centimetre on the smaller toy. Now, lastly, here's a more typical exam question. You're given two similar shapes and a couple of measurements from each and are told to work out a couple of other measurements. Looking through the information we've been given, we have the volume, in terms of pi, for each, so we can use that to work out the volume scale factor. 1024 pi divided by 128 pi gives a scale factor of times 8, so we can fill that in on the lav. The volume scale factor is the cube of the length scale factor, so the length scale factor is the cube root of the volume scale factor. The cube root of 8 is 2, so the length scale factor is times 2. Square this to get the area scale factor of 4, and we're set to finish the question. C is the height of the big shape, which is a length, so has a scale factor of 2. The corresponding length on the small shape is 8 centimetres, so C is 2 times 8, which is 16 centimetres. D is the surface area of the small shape, so we'll need to divide the large shape's area by 4 to get this. 384 pi divided by 4 is 96 pi square centimetres, in terms of pi, or 301.6 square centimetres to one decimal place. That about wraps it up for length, area and volume scale factors for similar shapes. Remember, take it easy on the pizzas. 27 times as many Chris Packhams in your living room is taking things a bit too far, and always use the lav when answering these questions. Good luck now!